What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Stars Made Me Do It. And we've got a special episode, a long-awaited continuation of The Stars Made Me Murder. So welcome back, Kaylin. Uh -uh. <laughs> happy to be here. Yes, uh, it's been a long time. So happy to have you back. And if anybody doesn't know, we've done a couple episodes like way back before the firestorm was the firestorm and Kaylin <laughs> came on and shared some pretty intense, sometimes classic, sometimes lesser known, um, true crime. And we've talked about the astrology of it. And so here we are with another episode of that. I know I'm excited to discuss some stuff, but just a quick disclaimer. We know we're an astrology podcast. We don't often talk about intense crime so if this isn't your cup of tea come back next week totally fine with us uh if this is your cup of tea then listen your favorite worlds are colliding and we're gonna talk true crime and astrology i feel like the millennial many millennials dream is coming true right now <laughs> I know. I think I'm the odd man out when it comes to this because I'm so sensitive about true crime that I like have to put my emotions at the door and like come in very logical to talk about this stuff. But I'm really excited to see how like the astrology plays into it and seeing like transits, especially seeing like what was going on in this person's life or like how did the stars reflect what was happening? This is, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. Yes. And uh, just another thing, like this episode contains no gore. So if you can listen to true crime, that's not gory. Please stay. <laughs> yeah, stick around. Oh, yeah. I'm not telling people to go run away. <laughs> <laughs> hey I nobody like <laughs> this is just for us <laughs> and another disclaimer all that I know about astrology is like what Sierra has told me so like I'm coming at this completely blind I know the story but as far as like the astrology I have no idea so I'm so excited to like hear y'all's take on it yeah it's like a colliding of worlds in that way because we are not the like research scripting type like side of podcasts and that's the side of podcasts mm -hmm. that you're on and so it's a cool coming together of like all right Kaylin's coming with the facts yes. and we're gonna come in with the astrological commentary and speculation musings and yeah musings is the better word <laughs> 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 also, before we get started, for anybody listening who also check out Kaylin was way back on the cancer episode of this podcast. Yes. And if you, um, you know, since you haven't been here in a minute, why don't you share? Do you remember your top three? Oh, yeah. So my uh, my my sun sign is cancer, which I definitely relate to. I'm very I'm a very emotional person, but um, I definitely tend to like hide my emotions. Um, my, uh, rising is Sagittarius, which makes a lot of sense because anyone who knows me is like, oh my God, she's like never settled and she's always traveling and <laughs> blah, 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 which is so me, but like, this is the first time in my adult life. I truly feel settled. And now I'm like, oh, maybe I should move to Ireland. Like, how can I change it all? Yeah. I know. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's very and then my moon is Aries and, um, Ooh. Yeah, so, Mimi is an Aries, so you guys, we ha we're bringing fire to this. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. What an interesting top three. Love that. Well, so Caitlin's going to be bringing the Cancer perspective here, but with a lot of fire that many people are used to hearing <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> with our fiery asses over here. So yeah, <laughs> let's tell us about this. You know, I'm like happily going into so tell us about the murderer we're gonna hear about <laughs> like oh geez. okay so okay before people get confused i'm gonna be telling you about the new york zodiac killer he's also referred to as the copycat zodiac okay so this isn't the zodiac killer that we all know and have grown to love in the true crime community but i'm gonna tell you about him first since if you don't know about the bay area zodiac killer it's going to be relevant to the story i'm about to tell so i hope that doesn't confuse anybody but here's just a super short rundown on the bay area zodiac killer like the main zodiac okay yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah so bay area the, knows how to do it yes he's from san francisco the bay area oh, yes. how fun <laughs> well, it's so fun for me <laughs> i'm so glad you weren't alive during the period of 19th 
1968 in 1969 when he killed five people in California. He is a yeah. unidentified serial killer, and the murders were subject to intense investigation and media coverage, particularly because the killer's taunting letters in newspapers and phone calls to the police. So his letters were sent from 1969 to 1974 and were signed with the symbol resembling crosshairs of a gun sight and typically began with the phrase, this is a Zodiac speaking. So total creepazoid. Um, included uh, among the letters were four ciphers or cryptograms, and um, they were first sent to in three parts to three different Bay Area newspapers. The Zodiac has five confirmed dead, two injured, and possibly 20 to 20 other murders that have somewhat been contributed to him, but the Zodiac himself claimed to have killed 37 people. Um, he often wow. targeted couples. Uh, one of the ciphers was just solved in 2021, and there are many theories on who the Zodiac is or was, but it has not been officially confirmed. And before all you true crime podcasters come at me and say, no, the Zodiac was Gary Francis Post, that hasn't been confirmed. They say it's like FBI people, but it's just like the society of former cops who like did all this research and think it's Gary Francis Post, but the FBI is not confirmed. Um, officially, it is still an identified American serial killer. So um, hmm. unless the FBI says something, that's how I'm going to, that's the official stance. <laughs> all right. Wow. Yeah. So that's like what we know is the Zodiac killer. Like what, when people hear yes. about the Zodiac killer, that's what we're talking about. And the Zodiac killer is a fascinating guy because he like would dress up in like medieval garb to commit his crimes and they didn't figure that out until he had a survivor and so they were like wait what so he expected to kill all these people and they're like why is he dressed up like this it was all the, for the theatrics of it like he's a real messed Leo. up guy. yeah i know is this yeah Leo? yeah <laughs> <laughs> not me I'm literally know. googling zodiac killer birth chart when we don't know who he is no uh there's been a <laughs> couple different theories but right now the main one and like 2020 so he's speaking is Gary Francis Post. So okay. I don't know what his birthday was, but yeah. Huh. But is he, was he convicted of anything? Um, I think he had a criminal record. I, I haven't done a lot of research on him because the FBI was like, no, this case is not solved. Hmm. So um, well, I'm sure he's I a Sag. Yeah. Oh, he's a Sag. Oh. So there's many <laughs> podcasts you can go and I'm sure hear about Gary Francis Post and other people who they think is the Zodiac, but that's not what this podcast is about right now because we're going to learn that's about right. the copycat Zodiac. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> you can't give me Before? one piece of information without me diving in. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to go <laughs> to New York in 1990. Okay. So forget all you heard about. And great here we great go. year to be born. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So on March 8th, 1990, a 49-year-old Mario Urzoko, excuse me if I pronounce these names wrong, was making his way home from work in the early morning from Manhattan to Brooklyn. So Mario required a cane to walk and he had a limp when he walked. So once he got off the subway, he walked four blocks and someone approached him who didn't say anything and shot once in the back and then the shooter just ran away. Mario struggled to his home across the street and called 911. When he survived the attack, the bullet was lodged in his spine and it couldn't be retrieved. So that made the investigation super hard because there was no ballistics that could be done. And Mario didn't see the face of his attacker. So three weeks later on March 29th, Jermaine, ugh, I'm going to butcher this, Montanero, a 35-year-old intoxicated man, was coming home from a night out when he was shot in the back and the shooter ran. The bullet passed through his left torso and went to, through his liver and Jermaine survived the shot, but honestly, like barely. The police was only able to collect fragments of the bullet, so it wasn't ideal to be able to run ballistics. Mario and Jermaine never saw the assailant and there was no ballistics that could be run that like would give him a positive stance. So it was hard to investigate and it was hella random and nobody connected them. Now this is, I only found this in one blog that wasn't reliable. So take this with a grain of salt, but Mario was a middle-aged uh, Latino man and Jermaine was a young black man. So there was like no apparent leak between the shootings. 
For those of us who aren't like well versed in the true crime world, can you explain what ballistics are? Ballistics is the science of of like gunshots. So okay. when a gun is shot, it goes through like a tube to the bullet, mm -hmm. like the bullet goes through a tube to uh, release to the um, whatever they're shooting. And so there are identifying marks on the bullet um, that can help them trace where the gun is from. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's like bullet statistics. Ballistics. Exactly. Okay. Um, I, I don't know anything about guns. I'm not a ballistic <laughs> person, um, but it is, I, it is, ballistics is a very valuable tool in um, police's uh, toolbox. Okay. So, and then also with serial killers, they normally have a type. So it's normally like either sex workers or um, redheaded women, or um, it's normally a type that they stick to. So like the fact mm -hmm. that he changed races and sexes is very unusual. Hmm. So on Thursday, the 31st of May, 1990, 70 year old Joseph Prance was entering his brownstone when someone approached him asking for a glass of water. Joseph said, go get your own, go to your own apartment and get your own water. So a sassy old man, which I love. So New York city. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he was shot in the back. Um, okay. by the man who asked him for the water. He died three weeks later in the hospital, but while in critical condition, Joseph was able to provide officers with a vague profile description of his attacker, an unkept man with a mustache and a beard, reported the New York Times. So, and he died from the attack, unfortunately. So this is not much to go on at first. These are just three random attacks from what the police see. A search of the crime scene from Joseph Ponce uh, produce a cryptic handwritten note that said, this is the Zodiac. The 12th sign will die when the belts are in heaven and are seen. The writer had drawn a circle with a cross through it and a diagram of three birth signs, Scorpio, Gemini, and Taurus. Days later, the offices of the New York Post received a letter with the same copy as the note left at Prance's crime scene, and the writer claimed to have shot and killed three victims in the three past months. The first sign is dead on March 8th, 1990. The second sign is dead on March 29th, 1990. And the third sign is dead on May 31st, 1990. It read, detailing the times and the locations where the shootings took place. The note also read that the NYPD could not catch him like they never caught the Zodiac killer in the Bay Air, Bay Area, and boasted that the gun had no grooves to the ballistics when it proved any answers. So the police were like, wait, what is happening? So they went back to the dates that were written, and then they were able to finally put together the, the three crimes I just told you about. And guess what? Mario was a Scorpio, Jermaine was a Gemini, and Joseph was a Taurus. All the crimes were committed on a Thursday and three weeks apart and few ballistics could be done um, because there was no grooves on the bullets. That's so interesting. And I also think it's fascinating that he started off with the Scorpio and the Gemini because those are the two signs that were always saying, like, stop the hate, you know? Yeah. Like, really? Those are two signs that are always targeted. They're always oh. targeted. Hey guys, thanks for listening to this episode. We hope you're enjoying it. We wanted to take a brief pause to let you know about Patreon and what we're doing over there. Every week we release extra episodes exclusively to our patrons. We discuss the current astrology and give a weather report of what's to come. We also let loose a little and share how we've noticed the planets are affecting us more personally and globally. If you go over to patreon.com slash the stars made me do it, you'll find that we have three affordable tiers to choose from. If you join our pop star tier for just $3, you get access to these public episodes before anybody else. Every week we release these episodes like the one you're listening to right now early. And if you join our rock star tier for $6, you get these episodes early as well as access to half of our bonus episodes we release every Thursday. So that means you get to hang out with the firestorm a little bit more every other week. Lastly, if you join our superstar tier for $9, you get the works. You get access to the early episodes as well as every week's exclusive astrological weather report. It's a great spot to share what's on your mind astrologically and have you how you've noticed the planets are showing up for you. 
And if you feel like you don't know enough about astrology to join, don't worry. Many of our patrons feel the same way. But joining us on Patreon, you get to learn so much more about astrology, see how it's affecting you in real time. So go check us out over at patreon.com slash the stars made me do it. So let me tell you about some more and then we'll go into uh, Eddie Seda. So the um, so NYPD started a task force called Operation Watchdog and following the pattern of the attacks taking place every three weeks on a Thursday. So they had a good idea when the next one would take place. Oh, he was scheduled. Yes. Like he regimented. Wow. OK. On a Thursday. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, is like a Thursday relevant in the zone? Thursday. Thursday. Thursday's ruled by Jupiter. And what is yeah. Jupiter yeah. again? Is that anger? Jupiter is like it's it's luck <laughs> and expansion, but it's also like bigger. It is better. I mean, Jupiter rules Sagittarius, so that's why you know it's very um, it's a higher level thinking and learning and philosophy. But it also is you know a day of like large and in charge. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's like the opportunity day, and when taken in a not you know, positive way. Oh, Those yeah. are his so like opportunistic he days. Took yeah. the opportunity, like an opportunistic killer is what they thought mm-hmm. this guy was. Cause like I said, oh, the wow. victims were not connected in any way. They were of different races, different age groups. It was like, if it weren't for the note, they never would have connected these three crimes. Together. Right. But he, but he did research on them. Yeah. yeah. He had to know what signs they were. We'll get to that. <gasps> oh my gosh, stop. Oh, so okay. ominous. So, <laughs> okay, so the NYPD, this task force, warned the public not to tell people their birthdays or their star signs. The media also went nuts, thinking that the Zodiac killer was back, the Zodiac from the Bay Area, mm. the OG Zodiac. So due to the killer's calendar, the next attack would have taken place on June 21st, which is my birthday. Well, five years wow. before, born, but anyway, <laughs> so uh, 1990, the killer had only struck in Brooklyn and Queens, so the task force put extra officers in those areas. But the killer struck in Manhattan this time. A homeless man, 30 year old Larry Farm, who was sleeping on a bench in Central Park, was shot by a man after telling him his astrological sign. Um, reported the New York Times. At the park, detectives found a note with the killer's mark and the fourth sign of the Zodiac wheel, cancer. The bullet shot Larry in the chest and the bullet missed his aorta, but exited through his body right in the armpit and was lodged in the bench. So they were able to actually match the ballistics to one of the previous crimes. Authorities Mm -hmm. sent the letter and found found at the crime scene um, to the forensics lab and were able to identify a fingerprint. The prints ha- did not match any in the system, of course. Um, and But they did match the sketch from Larry's attack, the, this old man who died, the note that was left. So they had those. So, so far, he's only attacked men. People, yes, and men. Okay. That will change them. <laughs> <laughs> the following day, the note was sent to the New York Close Post claiming that the Bay Area Zodiac, so the OG Zodiac was back, and he confirmed the connection of the four attacks. And there was also a thumbprint on this letter that matched the Central Park shooting. Um, in a doc I was watching, they had detectives come on and was like, I'm just a cop. I don't know this Zodiac jargon. Like, what is going on? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it was so funny in the doc he was like he was talking about signs and like who knew there was 12 zodiac oh god <laughs> this is not a new concept yeah but uh... yeah <laughs> it goes the 1990s through... when this was not mainstream at all so I think you have to remember that. But also, like, it's not a new concept. Like, yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say. Like, it goes through, like, ebbs and flows of being popular. But I mean, uh-huh. it definitely. Yeah, it like, was it was still... fairly popular in the 70s. Really? Yeah, very, very. Yeah. Like, I know there wasn't Google back then. But, like, go to the library, open a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there wasn't Google in, like, ancient Greek times when they were using astrology, too. That's so. true. So, yeah, so they sent these letters to the San Francisco Police Department, and it was confirmed that the New York Zodiac was not the famous Bay Area Zodiac. So, 
And it, the letters also state that he wasn't finished because he only had shot four signs. So there was eight more to go. So mm-hmm. if we're following the every three weeks and on a Thursday, the next strike would have been July 12th, 1990. And that didn't happen. And it didn't come again until August 10th, 1992. Whoa. Okay. So now let me tell you about Herberto Seda, who just went by Eddie. So um, I'm going to call him Seda or Eddie for continuity. So he was born July 31st, 1967. So that's a, is that a Cancer or a Leo? A Leo. That's a Leo. That's Harry Potter right there. It is Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> that's for another episode all right awesome. okay. i don't get the reference but okay right. no that's harry potter's birthday like that's his oh. birthday oh, okay. so is harry potter a serial killer then <laughs> i mean maybe of evil <laughs> oh so, Eddie was born July 31st, 1967, and he was the eldest of two children. He had an absent father, and his mother only wanted the best for her two children, but they were very impoverished, and so she really just had to do the best that she could. There wasn't even, like, enough money to eat sometimes. So uh, Eddie took on this patriarchal role in the home, and he liked the control that came with it. At times, he was quite controlling to his younger half-sister, Gladys, which involved mental and physical abuse. And keep that in the back of your head because that is super relevant later. (laughs) Though his family was living in a rough area, he voluntarily excluded himself from gang violence and drugs. And he was actually very rather religious and a complete loner (laughs) um, who slept most of the day. And I really want to emphasize that he was super duper religious, like uber, uber religious. Um, Yeah, he was a good student who hated crime in the area. And he was very vocal to his half sister that she he didn't really like the gang members that she was hanging around. He just shows on the fringe of societies and those who were making wrong decisions in his eyes. Was he so was he kind of like a good kid or he just had his own like his own individual agenda so before he was 16 years old there's honestly not a whole lot of information about him um but from what i from what i gathered and this is a very educated guess he he was just a loner he just kept himself and Mm -hmm. tried to do his best in school and when he was home he was like i'm the man of the house blah 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 so interesting Yeah. Um, So when he was 16 years old, he was suspended from high school for bringing a pistol to the school, um, as one does. And he never returned. uh, So he rather not returned than rather attend the mandatory counseling sessions to be readmitted into the school. Um, Because he was not in high school, he didn't have a routine and he would just hang out in his bedroom all day and sleep. A neighbor even called him the chronically unemployed recluse. He was unemployed. He never dated. And he supported, uh, he was supported by his mother, but attained money from stealing coins from pay phones and vending machines, as um, huh. one does. Very petty <laughs> theft. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So he tried to join the military. His dream was to be a Green Beret, but he failed the entrance exam. And of course, that made him super duper angry. And it wasn't his fault. Uh, All of his problems were everyone else's fault, as they often Mm. are. (laughs) So so during this time in his room, he's researched serial killers. Um, He even had a playing card of serial killers, which I want to know where you get that. Oh, no, Um, I I remember that being a thing, though. There was something about them making cards so that people would recognize their faces because uh-huh. the ones they were looking for i like that just hit me somewhere i'm pretty sure that that was a thing in case you know these are the most wanted let's make them on playing cards so that people get to see their faces often that makes sense um i know in jails they would put like victims of like uh oh, wow. unsolved cases and then they oh. would do that to help 
for you to snitch. <laughs> so I wonder if that's the best like way to do that though, because I feel like we see cards for like we idolize baseball stars and like we idolize people that we put on cards, and so it kind of like glorifies these murders. Yeah. The, yeah, the serial killers on them. Yeah, it's very yeah. Yeah. Can can we get into a little bit of his chart? Yes. So I thought it was so fascinating that you said he's very religious. Like that's a big part of who he was. Mm -hmm. He's obviously a Leo sun, but that sun is in a conjunction to Jupiter, which means that you can't have his sun sign without also having Jupiter there, which is the planet of religious beliefs of faith of go big or go home, like very big ideas. And also of like freedom. Thursday (laughs) (laughs) it's the day of Thursday so even when you said that when you were like oh he always like committed his crimes on a Thursday I was like great well that makes sense because he's got like this Jupiter sun right like in front of you right in your face and and also the fact that like he was a bit of a loner like Jupiter and Sagittarius are obviously very friendly and super people oriented but they also are very freedom and in like independence oriented too so they yeah. sort of choose when to be social and when not to be and they have that yeah. like emotional disconnection they're more of like the thinkers the bigger concept thinkers and so I would imagine like yeah he just had like a lot of ideas running through his mind or yeah wanted freedom it's very interesting with like the idea too of like I have to do this this thing or I'm leaving school and it was like I'm doing my own thing screw you like you told me what to do I'm out like Mm -hmm. as soon as you tell me what to do and also he was a good student who hated like guns and violence so the fact that he brought a gun to school was really like interesting to me and I tried to do more research about it but there really wasn't a lot and so Mm -hmm. and then the fact that he was like well I'm not going back to school is very stubborn so that made sense to me but the fact that he brought a gun i was like what yeah and that almost speaks to in his chart he also has his son in the square to mars and the south node which we'll probably get into later but like that sun square to mars could definitely show up as like oh i do not like aggression or i like have a fear of confrontation or a fear of violence but then it can also be twisted the other way where it's like there's so much inner tension within that and with all of these fiery planets the sun jupiter and mars that it's like combustible in a way yeah Mm -hmm. i was thinking about that mars in scorpio which Mm. when he decides to do something like that is a like we're not going back. We're going to the very like end of this. And also I do want to say that based on the information that we have for his birth chart, we don't have a confirmed time of birth. So it is possible that he, we know he is a Leo son and we have all of the major planets confirmed, but we do not have confirmation for his moon or his rising because the moon is either at the very beginning degrees of Gemini or at the very later degrees of Taurus. So through like Mm -hmm. hearing the rest of what Kaylin has to tell us, we, you know, maybe we'll have a a better idea of if we think he's a Gemini moon or a Taurus moon, but we can confirm he's a Leo and we're going to have to listen and see to that's our homework can for this episode yeah because yeah. yeah. <laughs> i want to know where this regimented is coming in like you're talking about he likes to have a schedule he likes well, to have like a routine i and was maybe looking that at Mars that doesn't what? doesn't he have venus in virgo yeah, yeah. i was like yeah, venus in virgo. Pluto. yeah that's like real intense commitment to yeah a routine and a schedule time in his room he researched serial killers like having the playing cards uh read magazines about guns and violence such as soldier of fortune and had a particular fascination with ted bundy and the zodiac killer the og zodiac killer who he viewed as a servant of god so one of the (laughs) yes exactly so one of the letters from the zodiac said that he was killing to obtain slaves for the afterlife. And so Seda, Eddie may have seen this afterlife thing and saw it as like religious. And he, um, this is me totally reaching here. And he also admired how the Zodiac Killer brought an entire area of Northern California to its knees with fear. So- um, Wow, so he wanted to be worshiped basically. Exactly. 
Because as someone who has some pretty important Leo Jupiter placements, like I've got Leo Jupiter, um, what's it called? It's not your chart your, ruler. No, but what is it? A mutual reception. I've got Leo. Uh, sorry, Jupiter in Leo. In Jupiter's mutual son. reception of yeah. my son. Yeah, and uh, I'm not right trying here. to get what. His Jupiter and Leo's at the exact same degree as yours. <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't mean Sierra is a serial killer. <laughs> Disclaimer, yeah. It does mean uh -oh, I do like Thursdays, eye. though. I do like Thursdays. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Wait, that like is Thursday. That is really wild. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. At the same degree that my Leo is in. Yeah. And like, yeah. I'm just gonna reinvention evolved versus unevolved placements, <laughs> and Kaylin, yeah. take it away. <laughs> And like, but like, he also was like, oh, I'm doing the work of God or like saw that as yeah. an act of service for God. Like, it just goes to show that like beliefs can be so great depending on where you like channel that energy, where you channel yeah. your belief into. Yeah. I am, so, I'm not channeling my I... belief into that. Okay. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we know. <laughs> That's good. And I, I'm a religious Christian as well. And Nothing in the Bible says you need to kill people to collect slaves for heaven. Um, mm. Just so you know. Noted. Noted. <laughs> Thank okay. you for that. Yeah. yeah. So the Zodiac was not doing God's work. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so in 1989, Eddie was a super isolated loser with no job, no money, except what he, the coins. Is that a technical with. term? <laughs> um, in Caitlin's world, yes. Super isolated loser. He Got was. it. Like he spent all the time in his room. His only interactions were with his mother and his sister, who he was <laughs> out of controlling of. And mm. he had no money. And he had a creepy obsession with serial killers. Now, like I always say, having red a flags. Yes. Having an obsession with serial killers isn't wrong, but idolizing them is. Mm. So Exactly. That's why I like cases where it mainly focuses on the victim, like missing person cases are my favorite to follow because it's all victimology, whereas opposed mm. to serial killers, people try to justify what they did and there's no justifying it. There's no justification yeah. whatsoever for killing someone. Which Sorry. is like, no, that's just bringing in a really Don't good Don't apologize point, though, like, for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's no... No apologies needed there. I'm thinking of just with like the example of, all right, the, so this clearly horrible dude, um, <laughs> super good yes. loser, whatever you said, um, <laughs> has the same Jupiter degree as me. And mm -hmm. that it like can show an example of like the power of Jupiter being channeled for beliefs. You know, like mm -hmm. that is like, there's so much more like that's where we can bring in the astrology to things like where we say like, you can never blame astrology. You can never blame your chart, yes. but we can find themes there because I'm a super passionately optimistic person that genuinely wants to like, just douse the world in optimism, but mm -hmm. it's optimism. It's not bringing yeah. people to their knees in a murdery way and so I just feel like there yeah. is that you know but that's where we can kind of find how are things mm -hmm. channeled like where can we where can we get the correlations and again we're not like okay so if you have 13 degree Jupiter and Leo that indicates whether or not you're a serial killer it's like all right mm -hmm. how are these things showing up and so we can kind of find themes. Yeah. In well, and I also don't like the excuse where people are like, oh, well, he was a psychopath and a sociopath. I don't think people realize that there are a lot more psychopaths and sociopaths than we would like to believe. And mm -hmm. um, and they're not all killers. Yeah, they're not all killers. And people, yeah. uh, it's judged in the psychology uh, circles, whether it's a mental illness or personality disorder, and even do personality disorder exist and blah, 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 whatever. Mm. But there's no justification for killing anyone ever, even yeah. like crimes of passion. And there's a big, um, the true crime community gets a lot of flack because people do try to justify it and people do try to, um, sensationalize m murders. Like these are the worst times of people's lives. Like, yeah. You have, there's a very fine line you have to walk for sure. Yeah. So. And this Jupiter is like, it's 
being I think the more important thing here is that it's on his son which the yeah. son rules your ego and you yeah. what you do in this life and like and not only does it rule ego it's also in the sign of leo which is the sign that the sun rules so it's almost like this ego is being doubled up then you add jupiter in the mix it's being like quadrupled up because jupiter is so much bigger than any of the other planets he has a very huge ego here and it's actually also conjunct this other part that we've never talked about called the part of fortune which is basically another jupiter so another yeah. like opportunity point in the chart like his ego just kept feeding him i mean i'm total. this is all speculative like i i only know as much as caitlin has like talked about but like no his you're ego right keeps feeding his beliefs and then his beliefs keep feeding his ego and they keep going back and forth together because of that conjunction there it's like a god yeah. complex very much with those yes. placements yeah yeah and yeah. spoiler alert eddie saida is the serial killer <laughs> um <laughs> all these oh people. But anyway, he was, I didn't think that was a secret. Sorry. Yes, but he was really, really pissed because they didn't believe that he was the San Francisco Zodiac killer. Like that mm. really made him mad and that he was called the copycat Zodiac. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, yes, God. you're just copying even... someone better than you. Yes. yes, exactly. And the Zodiac never got caught, but Eddie Seda did. So. <gasps> Yeah, keep that Ooh. in mind. Okay, so like I said, in 1989, he was a loser. Um, he was so <laughs> broke that he couldn't even buy a gun. So he taught himself how to make a gun. So like nowadays, we call them ghost guns, where like you assemble all the pieces and um, are able to make a gun that way or like 3D print them. But if you like make a cell, but if you make a gun from scratch, it's called a zip gun. So, um, but the thing about a zip gun is that you have to do any damage on anyone. You have to be like within super close range because it's not a real gun, <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so on the 17th of November, 1989, a letter arrived to the NYPD. The letter had an astrological wheel and it stated, this is the Zodiac. The first sign is dead. The Zodiac will kill 12 signs in the belt when the zodiological light is seen. The Zodiac will spread fear. The second half of the letter claimed to be the San Francisco Zodiac killer, the OG, and uh, who is resuming his killings 3,000 miles away from San Francisco and 20 years after the last confirmed attack. Like that doesn't make sense. And yeah, so yeah. in the Zodiac killer, he had the, or in the Zodiac circle on the letter, he had the 12 signs, which were all empty except from Taurus, um, which isn't the first sign of the Zodiac, right? It's not Taurus, it's Eris, but anyways, I digress. And it said the first <laughs> sign is dead. Huh. Okay. Yeah. So interesting. So the, in, so this was sent to the NYPD 75th precinct, which um, did a preliminary investigation to see if anything matched the leather, but it really wasn't on their radar. And by the way, the 75th precinct at this time had the highest murder rate in NYC. So this letter wasn't really a priority or a concern. Um, so you can't really blame them for like investigating it because they their resources were already stretched thin. It was regarded as a prank letter. Huh. So mm -hmm. he had killed four people. And then he took a little break and then he wrote a letter saying that the Taurus trying to be the OG, essentially. So this is actually before he did his first. Killing, gotcha. OK. That this letter was sent. So, okay. yeah. Very interesting about that first sign being Taurus. Yeah. He's already saying that the first sign, which is Taurus, is already dead. Now, the first person he attacked was a Taurus, if I'm. Correct. Yeah, so maybe but he didn't he... count that in like his set. Uh, but he hadn't killed anyone by the, this point before he sent this letter. Okay, okay, which is super weird. But he's saying the first sign is dead, even though nobody's dead from him, and the first sign is Aries, not Taurus. But anyway, maybe like just yeah. his like it doesn't seem like he's going in. He's not going in the order of the zodiac order. wheel. If the first yes. three signs were Taurus. Scorpio Gemini mm -hmm. that's that's not yeah definitely in not in order. order yeah 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 so anyway so they just thought 
So they just thought that this was like a hoax letter. And so it was regarded as a prank letter. But however, less than four months later, Seda would begin this prophecy and bring this letter to fruition when he attacked Mario, which was the first person okay. I talked about, then Jermaine and Larry, and he killed Joseph, which were all on a Thursday and all three weeks apart. Mm -hmm. So now we're bringing the two stories I told together. <laughs> um, okay. 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 So I said that Seda took a hiatus earlier, that his last attack was on June 21st, 1990, my birthday, five years before I was born, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't strike again until August 10th, 1992. So that's a 24-month stop. So we're 26-month stop, actually. So they're like, and he even stopped sending letters. So why is this? So a criminologist in the documentary I watched stated it was probably because what he learned from researching the mistakes of other serial killers. Um, <laughs> other serial killers, they normally be, get caught because they can't stop. And so they increase the frequency of their attacks and they start making so-called stupid mistakes. Yeah. So um, that's what he, so he got like, like they basically get too big for their britches and they get caught. And so he learned, Eddie learned from this mistakes that he made. Now, so what was he doing the, during this time? Are you ready for this? Yeah. He was a police informant <gasps> for drugs no. in his neighborhood. Oh, my God. Uh, like, what the actual fuck? <laughs> where am I seeing that? I, I'm trying to see that in his chart. That is... Mars and Scorpio like flip flopped Mars and Scorpio, but also maybe that could be, maybe that could be a Gemini, Gemini moon. moon, Gemini moon, you know, Ooh, that he, seems much okay, more Gemini so like, than yeah. killing was okay with totally. him, but drugs like were completely not okay with him. Like that had always been well, a because thing. those weren't in service of his God. That there you go. It's not so screwed up, but he was like, working yes. with the police. <laughs> That's total wow. like crazy Gemini behavior. Gaylin's <laughs> <laughs> no already with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the police totally, were yeah. still um, like investigating the New York Zodiac, which they knew that the four crimes were committed by the same perpetrator at this point. But the the task force disbanded because there was no crimes happening. And like I said, the 75th precinct was already stretched very thin. So um, the officers knew it would be a fluke on behalf of the Zodiac if he was arrested and had his fingerprints tested because they had his fingerprints on file. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, I get this. So on the 10th of March, 1992, so this is five months before he committed his next attack, Seda was arrested outside of his apartment because of his illegal zip gun. Okay. Um, they sent the zip gun to ballistics and the gun was made up of like shoelaces, rubber bands, and the ballistics people had no idea how it worked. So it was listed as an operable and the DA dismissed the case. And because it was dismissed, the fingerprints that were taken at the time <gasps> of Eddie's arrest were sealed and inaccessible to the police. Oh, so whoa. they could have caught him. Wow. But the ballistics for guys were like, what the hell is this? This isn't a gun. We don't know how to use it. Like it would, it's like literally like if you just went in like your craft closet and created a gun, that's what it looked like. Huh. Oh, but they had his wow. fingerprints on file. Yeah. The like, uh, what ifs of it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So on August 3rd, 1994, three days after Seda's birthday, a third Zodiac letter was received by the new york post four years after the last zodiac communication uh, the handwriting analysis matched the 1990 new york zodiac and the letter on the letter he wrote about the the first four victims but now this time he's saying he killed five additional people he also wrote zodiac nine nypd zero like he's taunting them <laughs> he, oh my god he had competition Yes, he had continued to commit crimes from August 10th, 1992 to October 2nd, 1993. The NYPD started the task force and noted that all these victims' attacks had taken place in Highland Park. 
So these attacks were on August 10th, 1992. Patricia Fonte was shot uh, twice and stabbed a hundred times. Oh. She later died and she was a Leo. On June 4th, 1993, James or Jim Weber was shot in the buttocks and survived. He was a Gemini. On July 2nd, 1993, John DeCone was shot in the head in close range and died. He was a Virgo. On October 2nd, 1993, Diane Ballard was shot in the neck. The bullet vis missed vital arteries and was lodged in her spine. She survived what was partially paralyzed, and she was Libra. The fifth victim, the NYPD searched through their police records and hospital records, but could not find anything that matched. The letter indicated that that attack took place on June 11th, 1994, and it was a white male shot in the head. Now, these four or five victims, four that are known, the fifth victim they couldn't find any information on, were not killed on a Thursday. They were not killed three weeks apart, and they were not killed in the street, but in a park. Therefore, these crimes were not linked to the New York Zodiac until this letter received by the New York Post. Hmm. Huh. So, so it sounds like he is no longer on like a routine schedule that others would be able to track but mm -hmm. that he was that it was still like regimented for him and also can we talk about the sign that he is that killing was so brutal stabbed a hundred exactly. times exactly and that's exactly. his sign so that's the attack of patricia fonte and it was different than all the other attacks so according to the documentary i watched um, she asked Eddie for a cigarette and they engaged in a conversation. Um, he said, I'll give you a cigarette if you come to Highland Park. And then he shoots her and stabs her a hundred times. Now, all the Zodiac crimes were, except Patricia's, where the, uh, the, Eddie came out from behind and they only received one gunshot injury. But, say, but Patricia received two and was stabbed yeah. so like Seda over killed Patricia they think at the time this was because Patricia spent time talking to Eddie and that the motivation for this overkill was because if she survived he she could have identified him although one of the mm. survivors Diane Ballard was able to get a good look at her attacker and stated that he was a male Hispanic in his 30s and NYPD hmm. made a police sketch and the task force wasn't getting anywhere in their investigation. So it's disbanded like the first. But yeah, this Patricia Fonte attack definitely stands out. I think so he's not really premeditating this, like no, because he's asking their signs, like he's asking strangers their signs and then attacking like whether but or we not don't know he's... how he received the first three signs. How did he know right. those signs? Yeah. Huh. What were you going to say, Sierra, about the Leo? No, I, I'm thinking about that, how, you know, like when there is an overkill situation, like there's normally so much more emotion, passion, like some sort mm. of like intense emotion behind it. And it's just very interesting that like, you know, in, in from what we've learned from this and like what we know about his sign, especially like Mars is anger, <laughs> aggression, mm -hmm. you know, and Mars and Scorpio, like that to me is like, it's also methodical and, you know, okay, like one gunshot, that's all I need. But then it's also like, I'm going to like, if a Scorpio goes into something like they're going to the end of it. And then this Leo yeah. idea of, you know, a reflection of like, I mean, there's clearly like at the same time that you have this God complex, there's clearly this element of self-hatred. It seems like with that, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, well, like Leo... he clearly, yeah, he clearly doesn't see himself as like pure, you know, if, like, yeah, now, I, I didn't think this was relevant, but Patricia had severe mental health issues and she had substance abuse issues. So mm -hmm. I wonder if that was an aspect in the overkill because we know he hated drugs and he wow. talked to Patricia for a while. And I wonder if he suspected it um, and he thought, well, she's a no good piece in my society. So let's just get rid of her. Hmm. Also, it does seem like drugs he... aggravate him in like such a way yeah. that is like in what yeah. world of like, I don't know, like. Where are your standards coming from? 
you know? Yeah, like what what is your rule book? Because it does not look like a healthy <laughs> rule book. <laughs> yeah. I feel yeah. like with him, he's got all this all this Scorpio and Virgo that yes, like there's a part of him that would be very methodical and have great follow through and have a plan and stick to the plan. But his Leo sort of does things more spontaneously and like more passionately. And it's really like continuing my feeling of him having a Gemini moon Same. because he doesn't have like a very set in stone and he his plans are changing and then he adjusts to those new plans. But like he he didn't stick with his original plan of every three weeks on a Thursday. He had almost that, like, <laughs> I want to say humility, not that I think it's really humility. Cause I think he, probably, yeah. his ego was way too big for him, but he was like, if I want to do this right, I need to adapt. adjust my plans adapt. Yeah. Which would definitely be more of that Gemini moon. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. I don't think a Taurus moon that a Leo sun, Jupiter, Scorpio Mars Taurus Moon I don't mm -hmm. think that they are making I number one making adjustments number two eventually getting caught like there's one or the yeah. other there if you've got those yeah. three prominent fixed energies you're either like absolutely not making adjustments or you know in a way that we're not catching you because you are so like perfectly thought out yeah and like I said um the first three attacks were not connected because the, the victimology was different and um, they didn't know until the letter. Well, mm -hmm. I, so they knew these attacks were happening in Highland Park, but they weren't connected because again, the victimology was different. The way he committed Patricia's uh, murder was way different from the, subs from the subsequent, how do you say that word? From the murders that happened. Yes, from the murders he <laughs> happened to act, from the murders that happened after. And so again, it wasn't connected until Eddie sent that letter to the New York Post. He wanted recognition that, hey, I'm doing this, but he didn't want his name attached to it, like the original Zodiac killer. Were they able to confirm that it was actually him, or do you think he might have just been like claiming crimes as his? No, it was him. It, it was, was him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I'm, I just was wondering no, how they No, I was wondering that. too. Yeah. Cause they yeah. only have the confirmation of like, well, he said it was him. So yeah. And like, yeah, he's well, clearly uh, a copycat killer. So like, he's not. When I go into how he was caught, um, it will all connect. Right. Can we talk real quick about his Saturn in Aries? Like Saturn is all about authority and who makes the rules. And Aries is oh. all about him. And it's literally in a trine to this Jupiter sun conjunction in Leo. So like we've got this larger than life ego, like strong belief in self. And then he's not going to listen to anybody but himself. Like his rules are what are most important with that Saturn and Aries. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also like retrograde, which is interesting. Like, cause I feel like <laughs> to him, this is all so important and major and going on and to the outside world, like nobody has any idea. Like, I feel like that yeah, it's all in his head. It's all in his head. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. I mean, like I said, he was a loser and this was the most <laughs> important thing in his life. Like in the documentary, yeah. they were like, this was his job was killing these random people. Yeah, like, yeah. how? what a fucked up guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to argue yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So are you ready for this crazy how they caught him? ready oh yeah so on june 18th 1996 keep that in mind because we will come back to that later the nypd received a call and responded to a shootout in east new york Seda's younger sister gladys who was 17 at the time was hanging out with her boyfriend in their apartment eddie Seda shot his sister in the butt and she was wounded but she was able to run to the neighbors and call 911 and Eddie Seda kept her boyfriend as a hostage. Now, three hours later, um, he shot and injured four cops um, in a standoff. And he finally surrendered after all of this talk back and wow. was identified as 28-year-old Herberto Eddie Seda. From the roof of the building, officers lowered a bucket um, of 
of which he was asked to pull out all of his weapons in the apartment and say to produce more than a dozen homemade zip guns. In a sweep of the apartment, investigators found two pipe bombs and supplies to make more weapons as well as gun paraphernalia. Wow. So he shot so, his sister in, in a non in a non like she didn't die. Like it wasn't a fatal wound. No. There we go. But shot his sister and kept her boyfriend hostage. Mm-hmm. And then had a three hour standoff with police. And so wow. after they finally went into the apartment, they found the two bombs, 12 zip guns, supplies to make more weapons, as well as gun paraphernalia. So they're like, what is this? This is not normal. Wow. <laughs> so Seda yeah. provided a handwritten statement once he got to the police station about the incident. And at the bottom, he signed his name along with the crosshair symbol of three sevens around it. This really quick quickly realized that Eddie's symbol, handwriting, and style matched the elusive New York Zodiac killer. Not only did they run his prints and match those from the note found, from all the notes, but the zip guns found in Eddie's apartment matched the ballistics that they had from the shooting cases. Um, his uh, saliva was also on a postage stamp from sent to the New York Post, that matched the DNA profile they had. It's just so crazy because he also kept his enemies so close with being an informant. Like, yes. Imagine being those police officers who were like, that was an informant of mine. So basically the cops come in and they're like, we know. And he just talks about the Bible for hours. Ugh. And then finally uh, he's sorry. like, that's my visceral reaction. Ugh. Yeah. And so he's just talking about the Bible and then finally the cops get him to confess uh, to the Zodiac crimes, the New York Zodiac crimes. And he was charged with three murders, multiple assaults, as well as all the crimes he committed during um, the standoff with police after shooting his sister. Within four years, Eddie had attacked more than nine victims, killing three, Joseph Prance, Patricia Fonte and Joe DeCone, along with the crimes that happened in his capture and all the attacks. He believed he was ridding society of dirty people. Oof. Yeah. So, okay, let's talk about that ridding society because literally the South Node is like when we look at it in a more traditional astrological sense rather than like the more modern psychological way that we tend to use it but in like traditional astrology the south node is about eradication and about ripping things away and taking things away and that south node it's conjunct, conjunct his mars which is about violence and aggression yeah in scorpio of like the dark right the occult the taboo death like he literally took away through his own violence Like, it's just so spot on. And then looking at the day that he was caught, I mean, this is just so perfect. I see it now. Tell me about it. We've got his Saturn freaking return coming into, It's his Saturn return! Literally, like, and, like, the consequences of his violent actions being an Aries. On top of that, the South Node, like, the way that you said it, that, like, his, uh, His independence, his freedom was ripped away from him because the South Node is also a part of that Saturn return, like having to deal with the the consequences of his actions and his freedom being taken away from him, rightfully so. Yeah. Yeah. I was at that when I saw that the Saturn was right there. I'm like, oh, so this is this is when you you don't pass the test of your Saturn's (laughs) return. (laughs) Yeah, literally. (laughs) You get and crazy, also, like, your sister in the butt, and then get caught for nine other murder crimes. Also, I feel like he's just kind of a shit show. Like for the god complex that he had or has, I don't know if he's still alive, but like for the god complex that he shows through his actions, he does a shitty job. Like yeah. he is not thorough, which thankfully so, right? Like obviously, that's a good thing for humans and for society but like when that was his job and that was what he was like passionate about sicko he did a shitty job and like yeah just that god complex like shouldn't be satisfied if if he never ever sent any of the letters or left the letters at the crime scene 
they probably would have just been thought of as random attacks in New York City. But like, he wouldn't have wanted that. Like, he wanted no, to be recognized. But, like, that's the crazy thing is that, like, his ego was so big that he wanted to people to know, hey, I'm the OG Zodiac Killer. I'm back and look what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely for, like, the accolades. Like, there was no... Like what, like to your point. Yeah, exactly. The theatrics, because to your point, he absolutely could have gotten away with everything like easily, Yeah, Yeah. you know, because there's nothing that were connecting those things until he was like, Hey, tap, tap, tap. It was me. You know, there was Mm -hmm. nothing that is connecting those things. And I'm not well versed in like, uh, true crime at all, but the little thing. From the little information I know, I always thought that like serial killers had a very set pattern. Yes. So Most does do. did he even like is he technically actually a serial killer? Or is it just a serial killer is someone who kills over and over? So the definition of a serial killer is a person who murders three or more persons and the murders are taking place over more than a month and including a significant time period in between. Mm. okay so it's basically like someone who has committed there's a difference so like people who commit like terrorist attacks those are not serial killers that's a mass murder a serial Mm -hmm. killer has to take place over time and it has to be three or more Mm. yeah yeah because that would like three would imply it to be a pattern as opposed to you know just repeating something and then Mm -hmm. over a period of time it's not like yeah exactly and then also a thing that i didn't see talked about um in his original letters, he thought that he killed everyone, but two of the people survived. Only one died, Joe Ponce. So huh. I nobody talks about that, but like, like he wasn't even good at shooting people. You know no, what I mean? Clearly. Yeah. Like, it <laughs> kind of sounds like he was just running around with this like little crafty gun that he made all scrappy and like just shooting and not looking at where that gunshot went. It's screaming Gemini Moon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm feeling very safe to say it's Gemini moon yes, energy. I want to like, sure. I want to speculate in a minute about rising. But I also do want to say that the day that he was caught, aside from this being a Saturn return moment, and the south node being right on top of his Saturn and the transiting Saturn approaching his Saturn, that we also mm-hmm. have just like the moon was in cancer that day, which was in trying to his Chiron, which just seems like, so that's a very emotionally charged transit. And then Mars was in Gemini on top of his speculated Gemini moon, another charged transit happening going on. So that's just like on this energy where it's like, it seems like he was very passive and not, not even passive, but not super he wanted to be in the spotlight, but he wasn't shouting it from the rooftops. Like he, he was like <laughs> sneaking it to the rooftops. You know what I mean? And this was like a very emotionally charged moment for this day that he was caught. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we had a lot going on in Gemini at that point. We have the sun, Venus, Mercury, and Mars yeah. all in Gemini. Mm-hmm. And like, all if yes, his moon is there, then at least that makes a lot of Venus, sense. Mercury, and Mars are like, bringing justice to the table like having information come out like the mars yeah like you said like that's aggressive and taking real action on it i was wondering yeah. where justice was oh, just hit myself in the face i was wondering where justice was here okay so um in 1998 uh eddie was went through two separate trials, first in Queens and one in Brooklyn. Um, Eddie was convicted of three murders and one attempted murder and was sentenced to 83 years in prison. At his second (laughs) trial, he was given 152 years for eight attempted murders, including his sister, several police, and some of the attacks. Um, and, And although... Eddie never revealed how he determined his first three victims' astrological signs. He never, ever, ever, ever to this day. Mm -hmm. Investigators theorized that he went through their personal items, such as mail, identification cards, before executing the attacks. Eddie stated uh, the intention for the pipe bombs found in his apartment were to detonate them at a movie theater. Um, 
So today, uh, Eddie is currently serving his time at the Wendy um, Correctional Facility. Okay, now here I'm going to go off on a little tangent. So while imprisoned, he married a fellow inmate, Cynthia China Blast, a transgender woman who was convicted in 1996 for the 1993 gangland murder she says she did not commit. Wait, By the way, is she in a men's prison? Yes, we'll get to that. She okay. was a, um, the murder that she apparently did not commit was a child, and the child was also raped, and it was a racially motivated attack. Um, this is Eddie's first romantic relationship ever, um, according to New York Magazine. And New York Magazine is a POS because they did an article on them where they photographed them like they were freaking rock stars and made it appear that they are star-crossed lovers and that Eddie oh saved himself for her. No, Eddie, you are a awful, creepy loser, serial killer, and your wife is a horrible human being because for fun, I read the transcript from the trial and I'm like 95%. For fun? Kayla, we have very different definitions of fun. <laughs> um, reading the court transcripts are so interesting. But, I believe um, it, yeah. So his wife, Cynthia China Blast, um, has gone on this whole campaign about transgender rights in prison. Um mm-hmm. But in my opinion, she is going at it the wrong way. Um, The stuff she says is for shock value, um, Mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um, And the fact that she doesn't want to be transferred to a woman's prison so she can stay with her husband, I think, says a lot right there. Oh, okay. So Mm -hmm. she doesn't want to be transferred. From the research I gathered, no. Um, Huh. But she will definitely say how her human rights are being, what's the word? How she's not receiving her human rights and her life, liberty, and justice in pursuit of happiness, blah, 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 um, because they won't pay for her gender reassignment surgeries. Okay. That's this a is a whole, whole other topic that I need to, that I really want to yes. talk about. But so, uh, I just thought that was interesting. And before I say anything, um, I definitely did. Uh, I'm not plagiarizing because I'm about to say the sources, but did I copy and paste some sentences? Hell yes. So my sources are <laughs> Film Rise True Crime YouTube channel, uh, Wikipedia, uh, Britannica, Oxygen True Crime, uh, The New York Times, and Deadline. Okay, so go. <laughs> Oh all your God. opinions <laughs> wow so tell me it, what me. you're speculating <laughs> for rising sierra because you do you have any ideas for that i feel like it wouldn't shock me if there was aries energy for the rising sign based on like everything seeming like really like with the saturn stuff and this being such a personal i know we have leo as like an all about me you know scenario but just about like the Air, something about Saturn in the first was talking to me. Mm. Chiron being there, but at the same time, I also think that Aries risings tend to be very noticeable, and it seems like he, like you know, was very sneaky in that way. Maybe we, yeah, I'm, I'm, un, I'm unsure. That's the only one I've speculated so far. But the mm. the before I like go into fully like continuing the speculation, I just want to say about the like everything was so poorly done. Like everything so poorly done was that's almost like a little bit like maybe that's why I'm speculating Aries too, because it's just like I had this idea. Yeah. I didn't think it through. Like I just did it <laughs> because it's like, wait, you you yeah. just you just decided that you're the zone you decided that you're you magically have become the Zodiac killer and you're trying yep. to convince everybody of that. But also you're and like, no one was the, convinced, <laughs> but like the concept <laughs> where, okay. So we're not even going to go in the order of the Zodiac, first of all, which mm-hmm. something about that really bothers me, which I know I shouldn't be annoyed about the, a crime, but like, you know, <laughs> you didn't even do your research about astrology. You didn't sir. even do your research about astrology. You didn't go in any order. You didn't like there was no method behind it. There's multiple of the same sign that were targeted, which makes me think that he was just like, I'll just make sure I get them all. You know, yeah, like yeah. we'll keep going until I get them all. And so it doesn't seem like there's any sort of method in that whatsoever. 
I could definitely see Aries rising through like the actions and through what you've explained. I did pull up a picture of him and like his eyes are saying Capricorn rising. His face is saying like almost Pisces oh. rising in a way. Oh, he I does. I mean, Pisces. I'm looking at a photo of him in a jumpsuit, I believe, like yeah. probably on trial. And he looks quite like clean cut. He looks mm -hmm. honestly, it's not someone that you would think is like evil when you're walking the street. So like I said, these crimes were his job. Um, mm -hmm. The New York Police Department actually found out that he would like let his hair grow out and then he would cut it right after a crime or he would grow a beard or a mustache and then uh, shave it right after. So that the descriptions didn't always match. Okay. So oh. like this, I feel like this mm -hmm. could be Pisces rising. Like he's shape shifting. He, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yes. And like maybe oh, Saturn yeah. in the second with Saturn. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, that would be Saturn in the second. Like maybe his uh, learning his lessons and his values. Like he never really learned that lesson and what's important. And like his, I don't know, like how to actually have a real job. I mean, I don't know this guy's life. I don't know his like inner monologue or his inner story, but I'm painting. And I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. like his psyche. But that would place his um, Gemini moon in the fourth house, which something about a moon in the fourth, I could see just being very like emotionally impulsive or emotionally charged or like your house environment affecting your day to day like habits and emotions. I just could yeah. see that playing out that way. I could speculate a Pisces rising, but I like the idea of like what Kaylin keeps saying about his crimes being his job does make me like mm -hmm. what you said about Capricorn. It's like, oh, well, yeah. we're, taking, we're yeah. taking this very seriously, you know? And, yeah. Uh, I could see that. I I just am so stuck on his little Leo stellium thinking he's hot shit. Like, I just yeah. feel like he thinks he's yep. hot shit. And that the world should run according to him. And, um, you know, the Bible says thou mm -hmm. should not kill. So yeah. he's not even following his own beliefs in there. But yeah. drugs is totally bad. That's that's not an illness. That's not an like you're addicted because you want to be like that's so wrong to him. It's just it's just so weird to me like that almost solidifies capricorn for me like he's compartmentalized yeah. what's right and wrong and what has a purpose mm -hmm. Ooh. so if we put I mean, him again this as... is all speculated like we're making this up but just as astrologers yeah. that's mm -hmm. sort of where my mind is going so then his moon would be in the sixth right oh there you go being of service but doing a really shitty job of doing it <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Well, Gemini Moon in the six really thought he was doing a good and, job. <laughs> and having his Leo Stellium in the eighth. Oh, 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 I think we nailed it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, he's got to be Cap Rising. And also he really does like for a Pisces looked, Rising. Yeah. I mean, Pisces and Cap Rising are so different from each other. Where Pisces Rising like in the eyes is so open and ethereal and like whimsical and then a Capricorn Rising in the eyes is quite like closed off guarded darker eyes darker features and he definitely has that like wall in front of his eyes that you can see yeah 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 I can see Cap Rising and like you said this was his job that's very Cap Rising everything Moon would then be in yeah it would be later in the day right so his Moon would be in Gemini yeah, it would be a Gemini moon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it would be. If he is a Capricorn rising, then he would be a Gemini moon. So I think that I think that we have at least in a, in a in <laughs> a from two astrologers who are educated <laughs> <laughs> in <laughs> astrological speculation and based on Kaylin, our researcher on all the things <laughs> of what these serial killers do and their type mm. of personalities. I think that we can come together and say that most likely this uh, loser, as Kaylin has so, you know, perfectly dubbed him, would be a Leo <laughs> with a Capricorn rising Gemini moon. Yes, I love this. Also, because the Saturn being in the fourth house, the fact that he like never oh, really moved yeah. anywhere, he never like a, a sense of belonging never really was there. And like, so he just like created this 
I don't know, this like independent sense of belonging, but really didn't have a place. Yeah. And he was ripped from his home for a Saturn return. Yeah. Rightfully so. I feel like I have to keep saying that. Like, (laughs) I support these actions of being ripped from his home. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Oh, Oh, interesting. Crazy. Well, this has been a wild ride. I'm like, yeah, I, I'm I agree so glad with you. I finally got to tell you this story. I feel like I've been talking about this murder to you for like two years. And I'm like, You're like Zodiac oh, killer. Right. Not that he, one. Yeah. He was a Zodiac <laughs> killer, but he's not. And he killed people according to their signs. And I didn't know much about it until yesterday when I did all this research. So, um, Wait, so say more about him being an opportunistic killer. Like, because that's so spot on. He was just like, oh, I see an opportunity. I like this Zodiac killer okay, style. So I'm gonna what I on. find really interesting is that the police think that he found out the birthdays of the first three victims from like staking them out. But in my opinion, an opportunistic killer is like second degree murder. There is no forethought about it. Um, so like you see, you see a vulnerable person and you com- and you commit an atrocity against them. That's what so it's an like opportun- spontaneous. Yeah. That's an opportunistic killer. Mm. Now, I, I don't know if I struggle because I think Eddie got exactly what he deserved. First degree murder in prison until he's like turns 280 something. So he's going <laughs> to die there. But, um, I mean, there was some degree of planning because he knew that he wanted to do this, but there was no degree in planning on who it was unless he went through the people's mail before, which I don't think like, I think maybe once, but like also he ran away. So how did he know their birthdays? That doesn't make any sense to me. Now on the fourth murder he committed, he asked, so did the first three just forget to say, oh, I told him my birthday was this. Because he ran away, so he wouldn't have time to, like, look at their IDs, you know? It's just – because that's what gets me on, is he truly an opportunistic killer? Because in every other sense, the attacks were completely random. Unless there were, like, obituaries after, and those said the birthday. But only one person died, and that was from the first three. And that didn't happen until three weeks later when he already committed his uh, fourth crime. And he so, sent a letter saying the first yeah. one is Taurus. Taurus. And it was. So was it like completely uh, like coincidence? Like, I don't know. Something is so weird about that. And he won't reveal first, that. And he that's the secret he's kept close to his chest. Like, what? What a messed up dude. Loser, 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 loser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you would think with, like, consistent to everything else where he wants to be, like, recognized and seen exactly. and, like, wants to be God, that he would share everything and, like, want people to be... Makes me going. think that it's definitely random because he's like, I yeah. can't tell people how I found yeah. out because I was just crossing my fingers, you know? <laughs> like <laughs> It's totally like... A kid just being like, I have a secret, but I can't tell it. I I swear I have a secret. I just can't tell you. It's like, no, you don't have a freaking secret. Like, yeah, you just want to be interesting. You just want (laughs) to be interesting. Exactly. You want the attention on you and you want people to be begging you for this answer, because if it was a really cool, well thought out answer, I really think you would have told everybody. Attacked two Geminis, too. No, three Geminis. Sorry. Jermaine, Larry Farm and uh, James... No, Larry Farm, they don't know if he's a Gemini or Cancer because he's right on the cusp. But he definitely attacked two Geminis, which are Jermaine oh. Mondrestro and James Jim Weber. So that also indicates that he didn't think out because he definitely exactly. wanted to call people. Yeah. yeah. And, oh and if that person was a Cancer, he had already killed another Cancer. Yeah. So that's why I'm thinking that there's no method there. He's just going off on sprees and then figuring out their birthdays. He said later. his first victim was a Taurus. Mario Orcazo, the first person he attacked, was a Scorpio. The first person who died, Joe Pons, was a Taurus who died. Okay. So, but he thought hmm. he had killed all three of those people when two actually survived. 
Yeah, I'm I'm going with the random method. Gemini. (laughs) Yeah, it's very Gemini energy. This is like, you know, I had a plan, but then the second half of me executed it. Scattered. Yeah. (laughs) And like, this is, I am married to a Gemini moon. I love them dearly. But this is like, (laughs) (laughs) this is an example of Gemini energy where it is very scattered. And it's like, what happened to the plan you made five minutes ago? It's like, well, I was a different person then, you know? <laughs> I was and- a different person. <laughs> yes. Gemini's too. They, they just keep it fun and spontaneous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like you can never, they're unpredictable. You know, what's so fascinating too, with this Capricorn rising, I, I'm just like every minute I keep looking at this chart, it keeps solidifying Cap rising. Cause like this Mars South node conjunction is in the 11th house. And he did these acts of violence for the sake of betterment of humanity. Like oh, how fuck. 11th house is that? Fuck. And it also places his Venus in Virgo in the ninth house, which is Venus is about like our values. Uh, Virgo is about being of service and ninth house is about God. Like, it's just, it's so spot on. This guy's got to be cap rising. I mm-hmm. kind of love that we don't know and that we like guessed yeah. it really fucking well. Like, <laughs> you know I what I mean? Like that we don't know, but we definitely know. <laughs> uh, yes, that's what I'm saying. And that is a little bit of my Jupiter and Leo loving, loving that for us. But uh... <laughs> yes. wow, this is fascinating. Oh I know I'm going to have so many more thoughts after, but. Thank you so much for bringing this story. Yeah, for... I'm so yeah. glad I got to yeah. tell it and get y'all's insight because like I said, I'm clueless when it comes to astrology. So this is a really cool meeting of worlds because, you know, yeah. it it gives us insight onto some really shitty things that like mm-hmm. a lot of us are very fascinated by. Like I, since, since having my own podcast podcasts, I <laughs> rarely listen to podcasts anymore because yeah. I'm always editing my own podcasts. But if yeah. I do, I'm listening to true crime, especially mm-hmm. shout out go what going West. That's, that's one that I listen to all the time, mm-hmm. but um, I definitely <laughs> like I'm one of I'm like a millennial who is like just going about their life you know and it's like and then they were killed with a blah 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 you know going on in the background like I'm I am that millennial I am that Pluto and, and she Scorpio. was brutally murdered just well, like yeah. drawing in your bullet journal yeah. yes <laughs> well yeah listening to the most horrific thing about mankind yeah. while getting a croissant or something yeah <laughs> millennial yeah. energy baby <laughs> yeah Pluto and Scorpio oh my yeah. god but this is a really cool blending of those worlds because we like many of us especially a huge chunk of the Pluto and Scorpio generation are very fascinated by true crime for the fact that it's like an unexplained taboo thing and mm-hmm. that I think like just in the way that we like love astrology to explain some of the unexplained or to find reason in things, it's very fascinating to put them together. Mm-hmm. And once again, I want to say we'll never excuse ever any behavior, especially mm-hmm. behavior as horrible and unforgivable and, you know, air like, you know, you can't redo any of these moments like this is a forever thing. But it yeah. is very fascinating to be able to be like, wow, this dude has some crazy unevolved Leo energy and we can see it show up in this way, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think Pluto and Scorpio shows itself as like a morbid curiosity. It's like, I know these things aren't good. I know they're not, but I'm so fascinated and curious about these, this intense psychological, you know, kind of conversation that can be had from these stories. Also want to say that during these crimes, Pluto was in Scorpio because mm-hmm. this was the time and he was like caught we went... in Pluto and Sag. Yes, with justice. You're right because it went retro. What? No, sorry, it was retrograde, but it had crossed into Sag. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very interesting, mm-hmm. very interesting. Before we end this, I just want to say the names of the people who died again, um, uh, because I think it's important to remember that there are victims in this, and mm-hmm. uh, it's not all about Eddie Seda as much as he would like it to be. So uh, we have Joseph Joe Prontz, who died on May 31st, 1990, uh, Patricia Fonte, who died August 10th, 1992, and John DeCone, who died July 20th, 1993. May they rest in peace. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. 
Well, I feel like our typical ending might not necessarily fit for, I guess we call this the stars made me murder, but I think we so should just, up, but hilarious. <laughs> it's really funny, but like yeah. they didn't, they didn't, but no. still, no. Uh... stars don't make you do anything. <laughs> nope. The ending I used to say for my podcast was stay safe at home and abroad. So, and I guess in our way of ending it, <laughs> Kaylin, why did we talk about the stars made me murder today? <laughs> because the stars made me do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Good question mark. Get this on the question mark. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Yeah.